from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon, I'm Taru Spiegel from the Library's European Division and welcome to this program about Jean Sibelius and Fritz Kreisler. And many thanks to the Embassy of Finland, Keijo Karjalainen and the Library's Music Division, Anne McLean, David Plylar and Jan Lauritsen for making the event possible. Also the great technical staff who make us look professional, thank goodness. Um, we're happy to have Jani Lehtonen and Jani Arrevara as our speakers today. And it, uh, let me tell you, it was very, very hard to get two speakers with the same first name, <laughs> <laughs> but we managed. And we also get extra points because the names Yanni and Jean, as in Jean Sibelius, are related. As you know, this year marks the 150th anniversary of the birth of Jean Sibelius, whose actual birthday was yesterday. And we're glad to remember this great Finnish composer and also to highlight one of the library's treasures, the original manuscript of the Fritz Kreisler piano arrangement of Sibelius's lovely violin concerto opus 47 D minor. And the treasure is right there being guarded by David. And why and when this Chrysler reduction was made is a mystery that today's speakers will look into. Sibelius was born in Finland in 1865 and Chrysler in Austria 10 years later. Both were extremely famous in their lifetime and are still well loved by audiences worldwide. Today's talk will focus on a lesser known conjunction of these superstars. I would like to mention that the library's holdings include more than a thousand titles relating to Sibelius. Also unique here is the Fritz Chrysler collection which includes manuscripts, personal papers and correspondence. The music division serves materials uh, for your music inquiries and the European division would be the place to go to for various European language materials including Finnish materials. Jani Lehtonen is first violinist of the Helsinki City Orchestra concert master of Joensuu City Orchestra, uh, as well as lead violin with the Philharmonic Entertainment Strings and a member in the prize-winning Arcadia Quartet. He studied at the Sibelius Academy and the Royal Danish Academy of Music. Um, Lehtonen has been a soloist with the Helsinki City Orchestra, as well as the Olborg and Odense Symphony Orchestras, among others. In 2007, he received a special award at the 11th Concorso Violino Città di Brescia competition. His sound recordings include Haydn, Kokkonen, Segerstrom, and Chrysler. Jani Arevara teaches piano on the faculty of the Tampere Music Conservatory. He graduated from the Würzburg Music Academy and received his concert diploma under the direction of Eric Appel. He has taught piano at various Finnish and German music institutions. One of Aravara's awards led to a concert tour that included Carnegie Hall, uh, a Carnegie Hall performance, and his repertory consists of chamber music and lead. And together, the Yanis published a Chrysler CD in 2012. They're working on another one that's uh, looking for a publisher that, that features this Chrysler reduction. Um, and they've done a lot of research on this material. And we hope to see it published maybe one day. Finally, for the fun bit, please note that the event is being videotaped and please turn your cell phones off. So I'll have a little talk here with uh, Jani Lehtonen. Um, so Jani, what led you here to talk about Chrysler and Sibelius? Uh, when Jani Arrevara and I made our first joint recording of Fritz Chrysler's work for violin and piano, I learned a lot about Chrysler's life. Our CD, published in 2012, contains a number of known and less known compositions created by this master violinist and composer during his remarkable career. When writing the booklet for the CD, Amy Piagoli's excellent biography of Fritz Kreisler, Love's Joy, Love's Sorrow, was a great help. It is possibly, possibly the most comprehensive work in this area. Biancoli's book ends with a complete listing of Chrysler's work made during his lifetime. Looking at this, my interest was sparked by the Sibelius Violin Concerto Opus 47, D minor, 
arrangement for piano and violin. So you had mentioned that this uh, was a big surprise, this information about the manuscript? Yes. Yeah. The information about the Sibelius arrangement was so interesting for a Finnish violinist that I began to investigate where I could find the music material. The Biancoli's list of works stated only that this was an unpublished work held here at the US Library of Congress. I spoke about the matter with some well-informed people in Finland, and it turned out that the Finnish National Radio's library had a copy of the Library of Congress manuscript, which is over there on the table. I received a duplicate copy from them, courtesy of the librarian Kristina Hako. At this stage, I still didn't know what to expect because Chrysler had made a number of published and thus well-known arrangement of violin concertos by different composers, as well as all other works whose structure he had completely changed. One can therefore rather speak about these as new compositions using someone else's technique. This, however, was not the case regarding the Sibelius violin concerto. Chrysler had kept the solo violin part unchanged, in other words, just as Sibelius had composed it, expect, uh, except for some very minor violinist details, which may be considered editorial suggestions rather than actual changes. So um, when you found the manuscript copy, what, what, what was your next step? What did you decide to do? Uh, we, uh, we decided to uh, actually record the whole thing. It was so good that uh, it would be nice for all the people really hear that music. And actually, the background music when you came in this uh, hall was from the CD uh, made by us uh, last year, and we are now waiting for a publisher for this, this CD. So um, you did a considerable amount of research on the Chrysler reduction. Yeah. yeah. Uh, despite our efforts, we have been unable to find any written references about the Chrysler piano reduction of the Sibelius violin concerto. So all the conclusions about this version are our own. Why Fritz Chrysler made his own piano reduction of the Sibelius concerto remains a great mystery so far, especially since Sibelius also made his own reduction of the piece in 1905. Also, the date of the Chrysler reduction is unknown. Future research may clarify if Jean Sibelius had time to work the violin and orchestra concerto into his 1905 arrangement for piano and violin before Chrysler made his own version, did Fritz Chrysler and Jean Sibelius ever meet? Both artists were superstars in their day and were only 10 years apart in age. As far as we know, Chrysler visited Finland twice, and thus a meeting would have been possible. Did Sibelius know about Chrysler's piano reduction, and did Chrysler have the composer's permission? We don't know. From the point of view of research into the recent history of music, it would be most enlightening to find answers to these questions. Okay, I have just a little aside. I was reading a little bit about Chrysler, and um, I'm not sure if he got to Finland this time, but he was playing in, in Russia and uh, met a Finnish girl and, and wanted to leave everything behind. This was when he was young and, and uh, foolish, right? But okay. he was persuaded to go back. <laughs> so anyway, what do you think uh, was the reason for the Chrysler reduction? Uh, generally speaking, the inventions that uh, rev revolutionized musical culture, radio and records, also radically changed music consumption habits. Before this breakthrough, it was only possible to enjoy live music. 
This meant that mostly only the upper classes were able to pursue music at the high level. It is also largely affected how music was published. For instance, Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi secured a contract from his publisher for the famous E minor concerto for violin and orchestra only on condition that he also prepare a piano reduction based on the orchestration as soon as possible. In other words, classical music in its own time was first and foremost consumer music. It was performed not just an, at actual concerts, but at home, in salons, and for festive occasions, often with a reduced configuration, not least because of the very small number of orchestras. So about 100 years ago, you and, and Yanni Arevara would have been uh, playing this uh, piece at home for your friends and family or at some local event? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. In times past, recital concerts were far more common than today. The artist would either play or sing most often to piano accompaniment. This seems strange to us today because we are used to hearing live performances for solo instruments or orchestras only as a part of a concert. Even until the Second World War, it was usual for violin recitals to feature a violin concerto with piano accompaniment in addition to music similarly configured for the program. During Fritz Kreisler's career, this was not at all uncommon. The fact that he created a reduction for the Sibelius Violin Concerto definitely indicates that the work made a significant, significant impression on him, because a reduction requires a lot of work and time. And I can show you, it is really a huge amount of work. These are our copies of the original manuscript, which you can uh, look at the, on the table. It's 39 pages, handwritten music. It's really great job he has done. So I would say that it, it takes uh, at least weeks just to write this whole thing. But he also made this great work of arranging the whole concerto again from the big orchestral score for piano score. So uh, was this Sibelius concerto well known um, when Sibelius composed it in 1904, right? Yeah. yeah, I would say yes and no, because the first uh, time it was performed in Helsinki, the first version. It, it wasn't a very successful thing. And afterwards, Sibelius made huge corrections for his uh, violin concerto. And uh, this is a revised version we nowadays know and hear soloists playing. And this uh, Chrysler's work is also based on this revised Sibelius Violin Concerto. And, uh, but uh, it wasn't very famous be before uh, Yasha Haifet recorded it. But afterwards, it has been a, maybe the most successful violin concerto ever composed. And nowadays, the amount of recordings is uh, over 60 recordings of Sibelius violin concerto. So it means that it is um, most recorded violin concerto ever composed on the uh, 20th century. So uh, Yasha Haifetz made this known in the 30s, right? Uh, yes, I, I think so. It was so it wasn't really such a super, super, super hit uh, when Chrysler did the reduction. Uh, no, so no, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, any conclusions about the Chrysler reduction? Uh. Uh, I would say that, um, uh, like I said before, he was uh, really great, affected about uh, Sibelius' music. 
And uh, we have to uh, remember that uh, he was extremely gifted uh, person as a violinist, but also as a composer. When he got the place from uh, Vienna Conservatory uh, at uh, seven years old, his uh, first teacher was uh, Anton Bruckner, really. And composing was also uh, main part on his uh, studies. And uh, he was remarkable talented to produce music by heart and also arrange other uh, compo composers' works for his own instrument especially. But he was also a really good pianist. So uh, that's why this uh, reduction for, for Sibelius Concerto is really interesting. And I would say it's, it's a real treasure for, for violinists, pianists, and also music lovers all over the world. So the quality is, is good, you yes, think? Yes, yes, it's, yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, so, as, as was mentioned before, uh, Sibelius also created an arrangement of this concerto. So, uh, what are the differences? I think uh, we could ask this uh, from uh, other Yanni now. He has uh, some kind of show, Dia. So, should I start with the show? Yeah. Okay. So, hello. Yes, in the following, I will present some notes on Chrysler's reduction in comparison with um, Sibelius's own reduction. I will also play some um, samples from our CD and some samples with the orchestra, a couple of samples. Apparently, there are at least three reductions of Sibelius's concerto. Sibelius's own reduction from 1905, like we just heard uh, from the uh, same time when he finished his second version, the last version of the concerto. A reduction by Alexander Kreshaninov, a Russian composer from 1942. Uh, which, according to Sibelius' secretary, Santeri Levas, uh, was uh, something Sibelius also liked. You can read one sentence of this, uh, of this reduction in, in the biography by Santeri Levas. And the third one, the unpublished Fritz Chrysler's reduction. Compared to Sibelius, Chrysler uses the low bass register more sparingly throughout the line. This is partly explained by the fact that Sibelius wanted to create an impression, whereas Chrysler did not. What is this impression? Um, this concerto is often considered uh, as, or, or its orchestration is co considered dark, that's true. There are lots of fagottos, clarinets, violoncelli, double basses, timpani that Sibelius uses. Uh, and the violins, for example, are playing quite low, not very often in high um, uh, positions. Um, even the first, no, I think this was the second critic in the US, the work was played first in New York. And the second one was in uh, Chicago in 1907, I think in New York one year earlier. The critic in Chicago Ta Tra Daily Tribune wrote, this masterpiece is orchestrated in strange and dark colors. So this is something Sibelius want, wants to emphasize. And on the other hand, Chrysler uh, does not want, perhaps. He, maybe in his mind, there is a brighter sound that he, he wants from the piano. To some extent, Chrysler leaves out 
these dark, mainly contra-octave bases, also contrary to the orchestra score. But these are just rare, rare uh, examples. Here from the first movement, it's very clear to be seen. Sibelius version, uh, deep bases, contractive bases, they don't actually exist. Fagottos, double bases, and kettle drum play this one, what we see in Chrysler's uh, reduction. Let's hear an example uh, by, this is Frank Peter Zimmermann, right? Yes, Helsinki Philharmonics and uh, Frank Peter Zimmermann. First example, just a moment. <laughs> Do you think? What do you, how do you find it? <laughs> Other, <laughs> <laughs> at least we. So in this Chrysler version, the, it was there were the same bases actually, like in the original version. Some other examples um, from the third movement. Same thing. Sibelius deep bases. They do not exist in the orchestra, orchestra score, and Chrysler. Uh, uses the same basis like in the orchestra score. Another note, in his reduction, Chrysler has a thinner texture throughout the line, which in some cases demonstrates, demonstrates a more pianistic approach. Here may be the best example of the whole concerto, also from the point of the pianistic approach. Chrysler uses Here Chrysler uses tremolo instead of chord triplets by Sibelius. These kind of um, chords are not very rewarding to play for a pianist. Uh, and I think Chrysler found here a very elegant solution. Let's hear how it sounds. I have a technical problem. Escape, yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Okay. Oh, no. from the second movement. It's very easy to see, very thick texture in Sibelius's version, Chrysler light texture. Or from the third movement, again, quite unpianistic writing uh, in Sibelius's version. Chrysler makes it easier for a pianist and perhaps this is also not, uh, not necessary for, for the sound image what uh, 
we see or hear in the Sibelius's version. There are also opposite uh, uh, examples of thicker or thinner texture. Chrysler here uses chords. In the same time, Sibelius just uses octaves, so a thicker texture in Chrysler's reduction. And also here, at the end of the third movement, uh, I think this gives, this is uh, the end of the whole, whole, whole work, of course, um, this gives um, weight for the last bars of the work, to my mind, it's, uh, maybe, gives more weight, it, it gives more, um, it emphasizes the end better than the octaves in Sibelius' version. Chrysler has some individual simplifications compared to the score in rhythms, harmonies, or in leaving out the melodic line. The first sample, for example, from the first movement, This is the original one with the 16th note. In Chrysler's version, he leaves that away. It sounds like this. In the first movement, there are some simplified harmonies. Chrysler just leaves some harmonies away. But these are rare, very rare examples in the whole work. And the first movement, I, I don't know if you can see something here. It's very small, but um, there are some slides on the paper. You, I hope you got when you get to this room. Uh, up here, there is a. line, melodic line played by oboes, clarinets, fagots, fagottos, French horns, later here by uh, trombones and trumpets. Chrysler just leaves it away. A couple of these kind of examples also in, the, in this reduction by Fritz Chrysler. And again, on the other hand, there are places where Sibelius does not follow the score and Chrysler follows. Uh, in this example, the melody should be on the beat, and it is the case in Chrysler's reduction. In Sibelius, he, for some reason, considered it otherwise. In his reduction, Chrysler has several abbreviations in the orchestra accompaniment, which actually are the most significant changes to Sibelius's score. Of course, if you leave something away, like in this, maybe the most radical example, um, it does perhaps some harm for the general form, for the architecture of the work. But on the other hand, and on the whole, Chrysler's abbreviations to the orchestra score seem very natural and also are elegant solutions. Here we wrote the bars Chrysler leaves away. For example, here, 10 bars, two bars here. Um, this part consists of 76 bars, and here we just see 39 of them. So there are nine places shortened by seven, uh, 37 bars altogether. Let's hear how it sounds. <laughs>
and so on. Chrysler had, has some of his own additions and simplifications which support the sound image, such as in the first movement, he uh, puts up or moves up the melody played actually by, by fagots and violoncelli down here, one octave higher, like this. This is perhaps um, one um, indication more to the fact that Chrysler had a brighter sound in mind than Sibelius. Or here, a rare example, um, Chrysler just put some chords to the end of the whole work. Maybe it gives, gives some elan for the, for the end. Or the third movement beginning uh, here, the kettle drums are playing this rhythm. And the uh, strings are playing the and last one. If we are doing it uh, together, we it, it should sound like this. <laughs> ah. I'm strings. You are strings, OK. okay. And so on. So it should, <laughs> should sound all the time. But it's not when you are listening, listening the orchestra well, version, the strings are more powerful. So the um, image you, you get from uh, uh, at the audience, it is pam pa pa pam pa pa pam pa pa rather than ta 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 So here Chrysler cho chooses the solution that actually um, support the sound image. The example is now played by Jani. This is uh, this is uh, Leonidas Kavakos and uh, Lahti Symphony. Yeah. As you can hear, even the timpani is playing the rhythm ta ta tan ta ta tan ta ta tan but what we hear from the orchestra are mostly the strings pam pa pa pam pa pa pam pa pa this is how it sounds in the priceless reduction <laughs> Generally speaking, one can emphasize the pragmatism and pianistic approach of Chrysler's reduction. For example, Sibelius's reduction has simply far more notes in the chords, but that is perhaps all, not always necessary to create an impression. Chrysler's abbreviations have been executed with good taste and thus sound natural. And I would like to add to this that um, leaving out the, the deep basses or moving up the melodic line here and there indicate that in his reduction, Chrysler doesn't always want to imitate the dark sounds of the orchestra. His intention seems to let the piano sound a little bit brighter than it does in Sibelius's reduction. Thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? Questions? No. Yeah, you have one. Uh, so one uh, question that comes up in my mind is the uh, 
in general, it seems like a much more practical solution that Chrysler is doing. Do you know from, I know that the date is not known of this particular transcription, but do you know if it was his practice to perform uh, a, con a concerto uh, with a pianist in general, in addition to his orchestral, perf orchestral performances? So is this something that he would do and he just needed something that was a more utilitarian type of, um, for his personal use, these types of reductions. I don't, I don't know enough about his uh, performance habits um, in the early days. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, as far as I know, Chrysler uh, played a lot of concerts with uh, different pianists. And uh, for example, he recorded all Be Beethoven uh, violin sonatas at least three times which is quite a huge work. So um, uh, recital concerts was his main business, actually. And But we don't know anything about this uh, work he made, uh, this uh, reduction from uh, Sibelius Concerto. We don't know, did he play it himself? But I guess, uh, I suppose that uh, he was planning to use this work in, in his recitals. But unfortunately, there is no written document about this. But did he generally have a pianist when he was doing these recitals? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. But I meant more um, when he's doing uh, concerto reductions in performance. Was that part of his staple repertory? So not just uh, works that are for violin and piano, but also these types of reductions. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know, but um, during his time, it, it was really uh, common to play every kind of music. Every, everybody did this yeah. at the time, so yeah. I, I, I assume Chrysler did it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still, uh, Yasa Haifetz played lots of recitals uh, and uh, playing concertos as the first half. For example, uh, this uh, Mendelssohn Barthold E minor concerto was very often played by him with piano. And uh, then after intermission, there was uh, show pieces and, and some sonatas and something like that. Even the if, yes, even if he, he was already a superstar who played with every orchestra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can I ask, what, y you are very, very interested in Chrysler. What, what in particular got you so fascinated by him? Uh, of course, his uh, works for violin are very fascinating for violinists like me. Or every other violinist should be interested about his, his works. Maybe that's the main reason we became so interested about his, his works. And of course, uh, the, this recording, we have recorded some, uh, was it 11 or 12 Chrysler's show pieces we played together? 11. 11, yeah. And it was quite a big work to produce these uh, works as, as a CD. And uh, of course, we played those works so much that, that we find out all the time more details from, from the score and so on. So it was really interesting job to do. And from the pianist's point of view, it's uh, rewarding to play uh, Chrysler's score because it's very pianistic always. He was a good pianist too and you can, you see it, you, you feel it always. Um, are these two reductions play are they performed a lot today? Uh, you mean Sibelius and Chrysler? Uh, Chrysler not because this is unpublished. So we are using only uh, copies and uh, I it's not uh, uh, available from music store or some somewhere. So you have to come here to US library to get copies. So Sibelius one, it's uh, available ev everywhere. 
And also this great Chanino. Krishna great uh, Chanino is too. Yeah. 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 Mostly you play, play the Sibelius version. Of course, nowadays, um, reductions are mostly played in concerts just in choral works, from, by, from the choral works. Not so often anymore in this kind of instrumental concertos. Yeah, in fact, um, your, your performance last night at the Finnish Embassy was probably the premiere of this Chrysler reduction. Yes, it could, could be true that uh, it m might be the first time ever uh, here, here in the U.S. And of course, we have played this together somewhere in Finland. And uh, uh, day before yesterday, we played it in Copenhagen when it was uh, a Finnish national day. So that was actually the first really public concert of this version we gave. Any other questions? Hmm. All right, well, um, we have some music then to round up this program, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Mike Turpin back there is, has been handling the yeah. technology. So this is... Uh, the third movement of Sibelius Concerto with uh, Chrysler Piano Reduction from the CD we, we made last year, and we are still looking for a publisher for this CD. So if here is millionaires, <laughs> just... <laughs>
Thank you. And uh, if you're interested in the manuscript, it's over there. And uh, that's Fritz Chrysler's childhood violin, right? This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.